the Joe Rogan experience. This one is a weird one, right? Whereas a lot of people get it and they're asymptomatic. Um, I've, I've had several friends that got it and literally experienced no, no symptoms. They were around people that had it. They got it. Um, they tested positive and uh, got as little as a mild headache or a, a slight cough for a day. Um, Jamie had it and he thought he had a sinus infection. He thought he, he has allergies and he thought it was just his allergies kicking in. Turns out he was positive, but he was very fortunate. It was, it was a very mild case. Do we know why with some people get it, when some people get it, it's devastating, including young people. I have a young friend, he's 28, he got it, and he was really ill for two weeks, whereas some people get it and it's nothing. Yes. So we, we have some sense of some of the reasons it varies, but um, not a huge understanding yet of the interpersonal variation. But I would like to uh, go on a tangent based on that that highlights the ways in which these kind of protean manifestations of this disease, the fact that with this condition, you can go from everything from having no symptoms to mild symptoms like Jamie to more serious symptoms like your 28-year-old friend to really severe symptoms to being hospitalized to dying, right? There's this incredible range of diseases that this particular virus can cause. And in a way, this is very unfortunate for us because it makes it so much harder as a society to take the virus seriously and to combat it. Let me let me give you an analogy. So I want listeners to imagine that there are two worlds. I'm about to describe two different worlds. In world A, there are a thousand people and a virus infects 10 people in this world, makes them seriously ill and one person dies. So we would say that in this world, 10% of the people that got sick died of the virus. That's world A. In world B, there are a thousand people. The virus infects a hundred people. 90 of them get mild illness. 10 of them once again get serious illness, like in world A, and one of them dies, again, like in world A. So in this world, in world B, a hundred people got sick and one died. So we might say 1% of them died. In world A, 10% of the people that got sick died. In world B, 1% of the people that got sick died. Now, many people hearing about this might, might think that it's better to be in world B because, you know, it seems like the virus is less deadly. But that's a delusion. Because if you stop and you think about it a little bit more clearly, world B is the same as world A, plus an extra 90 people got mild illness. In other words, Nobody, right, no right-thinking person should prefer to be in world B than to be in world A. In world A, 10 out of 1,000 people got seriously ill and one died. And in world B, that happened, plus another 90 people got mildly sick. So it's clearly worse. The overall situation is worse in world B. And that is, in fact, the situation that we are facing. We are in a, like a world B situation with this virus. And the reason it's hard is that it, all these extra people, those 90 people who got mild illness, make people take the disease more you know, casually. Mm. Whereas in world A, people might say, well, not many people are getting sick, but when they get sick, 10% of them die. Wow, we should take this disease seriously. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do see what you're saying. So this, this virus is very sneaky in that way. Yes. It's really like if you wanted to engineer a virus that's going to spread the most, that's kind of how you would do it. Have it affect so many people where they're like, it was nothing. And then some people where, you know, they're dead within a few days. Yes. And also, as you pointed out earlier, it also has this property of being transmitted, transmissible when it's asymptomatic. So just mm -hmm. to just to remind people, HIV is like that. You can have HIV for years and not know it. You're spreading it to your sexual partners and then it kills you much later versus smallpox, which you can't really spread smallpox before you have symptoms. You the pustules erupt on your body. And that's when you become infectious. So there's a there's a there's a uh, there's no asymptomatic transmission uh, in smallpox, and there is in HIV. And SARS one from 2003 was more like smallpox. In other words, people didn't begin to transmit the virus until they actually had symptoms from it, which is one of the reasons it was easier to control because when people got symptoms, we could isolate them. Whereas with the SARS that we're facing now, the SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19. 
uh, people can transmit it when they're when they're not symptomatic. And in fact, there's a lot of analyses that have been done that show about 75% of the infections have been acquired from people who are asymptomatic. There's so. Not- there's another issue as well that we can compare to smallpox in that you can develop a vaccine for smallpox that actually works for your whole life. You can't really do that with COVID, correct? We don't know for sure. We don't know that for sure. We, I don't know that for sure. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to have a, a vaccine that has long-term, uh, confers long-term immunity, but I don't think we know that either way for sure. Episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience are now free on Spotify. That's right, they're free. From September 1st to December 1st, they're going to be available everywhere. But after December 1st, they will only be available on Spotify, but they will be free. That includes the video. The video will also be there. It'll also be free. That's all we're asking. Just go download Spotify. Much love. Bye-bye.